Okay. Uh -huh. Let's sit out here. Mm -hmm. How have you been? been all right. <sighs> Listen, Karina told me about the situation that happened with you and her. Okay. And she told me how everything went down. And I'm not happy. When you're angry, you, you say things to her that are hurtful and I don't agree with. And as a mother, no matter what, right, wrong, or indifferent, I have her back 110%. Honestly, Paulie, I'm extremely hurt and disappointed. Like, I felt like you were a son to me, and I just never thought that something like that would ever happen. She felt so betrayed by you. You're calling her name, she's calling you names. It's gotta end. At this point, I've had enough of Paulie. Like, I'm not gonna keep going through Karina. It's annoying that anytime Karina tries to do something for Karina, it always involves Paulie, whether it's a good way or a bad way. So it's time for me to address Paulie himself and tell him what it's gonna be. At the end of the day, that's my daughter. The disrespect across the board, I'm asking you to, like, cut that out. Both of you have so much growing up to do. You have so much learning to do. You choose to be in Karina's life, you have to learn how to be friends with each other and be able to communicate with each other, because the only thing that will happen by not being able to communicate was affect other people around you, which it has affected me. It's probably affected your friends. You're right, and I, as a mother, I definitely understand where you're coming from. I was immature, and I handled it in an immature way, and... You may have acted immature at a moment, but now it's about your maturity and how you deal with it from here on out. I'm very small-minded at times, and I, I, I let my temper kind of... You let your temper, me. you let your emotions, like, everything. you know, you love Karina to an obsession. It's just, it's, it's toxic. I think Paulie truly loves Karina. Sometimes his emotions get the best of him. So I want to give him the benefit of the doubt. He just doesn't know how to really balance being in love with someone and how to respect someone. And I believe he completely loves Karina. It's just, can he handle it? Does he know how to act? Time will tell. So you guys could be in a relationship, you could be cordial, or you never talk again. That's going to be up to you two. But the way you guys move forward is to have respect for each other. Put the wine glass down. Oh, you're nervous? Yeah, a little bit. Well, I also have a white sweater on. I don't want to ruin this sweater, so I won't ruin your couches. I really hate you. So how'd the podcast go? The podcast went well. Me, Ramona, and Karen, we had a blast. But, yeah, I don't know. This is just something that comes on my mind every now and again. If I wanted to contact the sperm donor, um, as long as you think that you're strong enough to do something like that. But the last time we discussed it, you were not in that space. So I don't know, is it worth it? It's about you. If you need that to heal, if you need to do that, it's got to be for you. You know, I'm a mom. This is my baby. I do not want to see her hurt. I have no contact with him, so I don't know his mindset. I don't know if, you know, he would welcome it and, you know, be back in their lives. And maybe he'll get to explain why he did certain things or why he didn't do certain things, and hopefully the exchange could go well. I think Anissi could give me very level-headedness advice. 100%, and she knows him very well. I feel like if she has contact with him, mm -hmm. she'll know maybe where he is and maybe his state of mind. Get a feel for it, maybe. Nisi's my great aunt, so she is my biological father's, like, aunt. She is the only person on that side of the family who I have stayed close with and kept a connection. So if there would be anybody who would know anything about that man, it would 100% be my Aunt Nisi, possibly, but who knows. You're a grown woman. If you needed closure, you should get it. Whatever makes you feel right. I think that someone needs to give it to him, and I'd rather it be me. I would just like to sit him down and ask him a question. How does it feel to know that another man raised your kids? No, I know. How? I would like to just rip him apart for being just a <laughs> And then I would say, but honestly, at the end of it, like, thank you. Right. And I forgive you, because you want to know something? If you weren't such the piece of <laughs> that you are, I wouldn't be the greatest thing that I am now. I really wouldn't be. I'm just, I'm over it. I'm done. I'm at, I'm, I'd rather him get his hands at him, because that's what he needs. Oh, Dan. It's annoying. Oh, I know. It hurts. I know. Like, I don't, I don't, 
I don't get it. How could you look at your two kids and not want to be their father? I know. Please don't think that it's because of you. You know, I did ask myself that for many years because how could he leave such amazing kids? I don't know, but it's definitely not you. There was a time in my life where I pictured you in a wedding gown every day. No matter how much we fought with each other, no matter what happened, I always wanted to marry you. I don't know you from a hole in the wall, right? I'm old school. Dad, behave yourself. Excuse me. No, excuse Is me. Is that not disrespectful? Sit outside. Taylor, come here, Taylor. Taylor, Taylor, Taylor. Taylor, How you doing, all right? Good, Ready to lace me up or what? Are you doing? ready? I'm ready. Oh, God. It's looking crazy, Look right? at that, it's bad. Skin tape up? Yeah, skin tape, just the size in the back, skin it out. I bet. Pops, Pops, he's been telling you to come see me, right? Yeah, telling me every time. Adam's always been around, you know what I mean? My father knows him from the neighborhood. Adam used to cut hair out of his garage before he cut hair out of Aces. Christian was in diapers when his pops was coming in for skin tape-ups. Yeah. I want to have a little something set up or maybe have some money or, you know, something steady to rock with so when he comes home, you know what I mean, he's not coming home to nothing. I can save up a little bit, you know, when he, when he touches down, I can toss him some money. Yo, here, take this. That's what I was telling you, Uncle Ann, about, I don't know, maybe coming in here, cutting or something. That's what we talked about. Cutting hair? Yeah. Yeah, you just one day woke up and you decided, oh yeah, I'm gonna start cutting hair. Like, nah, I'll be honest. I was, you know, I was young and I had a, always a pair of clippers in the crib, so I would cut people. Yeah. You know, and it's yeah. the easiest transition from the, you know, from that street life. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, CP, if you're serious, bro, we'll get you some hours in as an apprentice. You could turn that into a master's bulb license. But you gotta, you know, you gotta really, you gotta think what you want to do, brother. I mean, he came from a different lifestyle. So you can't just throw somebody into saying, oh, you're going to go to work 9 to 5. Instead of doing nothing and sitting home, and you know what I mean, idle time is no good. I think right now to keep my mind occupied could definitely be a great thing. Close to home, I know Adam. Like, you know what I mean? There's a lot of positives. You give it a shot? I think I might have to give it a shot. I mean, if he's telling me he got me, why not? Serious, I'll see you Tuesday. Yeah. If you don't show up Tuesday, that means you're not serious. That's it. No. I appreciate you always. Thanks for Thank you. to see me. Nah, 100%. I'll be caught in here like this in six months. I'll be the last one standing. Dare you to take me for granted. What are you doing here? Oh, I guess we can go upstairs. Paulie was out of control the night of the fashion show. And not only am I over being disrespected, but I'm over his overreacting moments. So I want to hear what he has to say face to face between me and him. And we can go from there. So what's up? What do you have to say? You've been focused. I've been focused. You, you've been doing your thing. I've been doing my thing. And I f***ing get it. Like, but I'm not going to sit here and act like I don't f***ing love you, even though I may, I may do that. But I'm not going to sit here and act like I don't f***ing love you. The way you talk to me is like, Nobody will ever talk to me like that. OK, I apologize. Because some nights you'll sit there and be like, you're the only thing. You do so much for me. You're this, you're that. And then the next day, you'll be like, you're a dog. You're this, you're that. Why? Because I'm living my life now. I don't I don't get it. Like, I can never just be happy. I just the bad outweighs the good. That's the You fall with me every day of my life. We do not work together, period. You just don't know what you want, honestly. You really I don't. No, you don't know what you want. I do know what I want. So what do you want? I want to be happy. I feel like there's so much drama and so much immaturity and so much problems between me and Poi right now. I don't know where we can go from here. There was a time in my life where I pictured you in a fucking wedding gown every day. No matter how much we fought with each other, no matter what happened, I always wanted to marry you. The best decision is for us to be apart. It should have been you. It was always you. 
I'm done with this conversation.